other nominations for Okay, that's for the that's for the camera. Okay. Can this just be here or do I have to wear it? Okay. Thank you very much for your confidence. Um, so just uh, m most of us have been to town meetings before, um, so we won't spend a lot of time um, on the warm up. But just to remind you, we are going to use Robert's rules, remind you to speak to the issue uh, rather than to each other, uh, direct your comments to the moderator. Um, and um, even if it's a question for someone in the room, direct the question to the moderator, and then we'll call on somebody who can answer it. Um, Anybody here who's not a Middlesex voter? Okay. Oh, and two little ones, yes, all right. Just a reminder that if you're not a Middlesex voter, you can't vote. Um, feel free to ask questions at any point. Um, just raise your hand. This is your meeting. Um, so uh, if there's a question about process, feel free to, to, to raise that. Um, we are only going to address warned articles. There are two articles. Um, hopefully you know where they are. Have they been printed out? Okay, great. Yes. Um, and um, we will be voting either by voice or by a show of hands. If at any point you wish that um, we could vote in private and you want a paper ballot, you can call for one of those as well. That's, that's another option. Okay, so Article 1. These are really long. Article 1 Shall the voters of the Middlesex District approve the grant of an option agreement? from the Middlesex School District to the town of Middlesex, which gives the town of V, which I think is supposed to be the town of Middlesex. Yes, okay. The right to purchase the real estate upon which the Remini Elementary School is currently located from the Middlesex School District or its successor in, in interest for the purchase price of $1 in the event the property is no longer used for educational purposes. That's the article. Is there a motion? I'll move the article. Peter, Peter Hood moves. Is there a second? Dorinda Crow? Second. Okay. The article has been moved and seconded. Is there discussion on Article 1? Yes. Is that in one of these two packages? The, the article? Yeah. yeah. No, it's not. Those two are these sort of uh, addenda things. Do we have the actual warning printed? We think maybe we don't. Yeah. So. That would have been nice to have. Right? Yes, that would have been nice to have. Yes. Um, it was on the town website, um, uh, and if at any point you would like me to read it or parts of it again, I'm sorry. Uh, unless we have printing. Well, the option agreement is right here. The option agreement, but not the article itself. Do, do you want to read? Is it on the board? I can go make copies. I can go read it. I can go get it right now. Because this talks, the easement talks about ten dollars, and that talks about one dollar, and that's this is different. Uh, this is the purchase of the building. Um, the easement is um, having a property right for access to the property, even be, despite purchase. Okay. So, may, would you like a copy of the article itself? Yeah, it'd be okay. nice. Like, so a lot of people probably out there. Okay. Yeah, if you can get one from the blue and just run some copies. How many people want copies? Like, do we need one for everybody? Just so maybe um, a dozen or so. And Chris is the guy with the answers, by the way. So all of these questions that we're going to be raising, um, Chris is likely as a school board member. Are we have other school board members present? Okay, one more. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Hey, there's a hero. Thank you. So 
So how about those gardens? How about those bugs? It's like the worst. It's like the worst. I just blowed my own. <laughs> and all the rain just ruined my basil so far. I have to replant woodchucks in my peas. <laughs> can you put this to music? Can I, can I put this to music? Yeah. <laughs> the rain has ruined my basil and woodchucks in my peas. <laughs> should be something that rhymes with that, too. Please. Just um, anecdotally, I didn't realize that we even still had ten, uh, school meetings here. We haven't had a school meeting in Middlesex for, since the 90s. And that's because we voted to vote on our budget by Australian ballot. But what we didn't vote was to vote our um, uh, government, the, in, any other public issues, public issues by um, uh, Australian ballot. So we're still voting on any public issues that have to do with the school. Um, in the floor format for another two days. We also vote school officers. Say what? school officers. And we, yeah, we vote school officers by Australia. Yeah. So this is the format uh, we have for um, governance, governance issues and um, things like land. You hear? All right, great. All right, so one, two. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're in discussion of Article 1. Um, there, are there questions, comments, clarifications, or would people just like to hear Chris explain Article 1 a little bit? Some nodding of heads. So Chris, maybe come on up, use the microphone. Um, and, and, I, um, and I'll still be, I'll still be moderated. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Take over. Yeah. Um, so Article 1 has come about because, um, as most of you know, I think, we are being uh, merged. Um, and uh, as part of the merger, which will take effect on July 1, in a couple of days, um, all of the property, um, including the Romney School and the Romney School land, will be transferred to this new district, this new entity. Um, and as part of the um, um, default articles, there is a provision that, um, allow, that says if the, if the new district is no longer using the school, um, for school purposes, um, that it is offered for sale back to the town for a dollar. So this article basically mirrors that default article, and the reason that uh, the board put forward this article for uh, the town to vote on is because default articles can be amended um, by the new board. And so this is a method of ensuring that um, if Rumley School is no longer being used as a school, that the town has first right of purchase um, once the school use is done. So it basically mirrors the default article, um, but it is, I think, greater protection because this can't be amended by the new board. It could be amended so, by this It could be, right. It could group. be amended by this group, by the town, uh, and it's an option. The town doesn't have to exercise the option, but it's an option. And so that was the purpose of, the, of Article 1. In, yeah. I do have one question. I thought the rec field, the tennis court, and the baseball field, soccer field, that was all separate from the school. Is that it is. The, it has nothing to do with the, those pieces of property or town property. Okay. Uh, and it's like the school building and the school, the, town, the school property. Any other questions? Yes, thank you. School property encompass the forest also, be the trails and things behind the mini soccer field? Where does the pro what is the property encompass? The bat whatever the boundaries are. I mean, you know, I don't okay. know them specifically, but it's about a ten acre area, I think. Peter's shaking his head no. No. Yeah, it's about a ten acre piece of land. Um, so anything that is currently owned by the Middlesex school district is being transferred over to the Washington Central Unified Union School District. So that as of July one. Playground and maybe the parking lot. It's everything. It's a, it just, whatever it is, the school property gets transferred over. Tom? Um, should the breeze end building be the added to Article 1? Because it talks about the real estate. Uh, and the next one, Article 2, talks about the real estate and buildings. Uh, and, you know, I think the real estate would include the building. Um, so maybe if there's a motion to amend the article, um, I'd certainly entertain that. 
Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The moderator would entertain <laughs> that. <That's not> <laughs> Such a little Just job, like a it? sister. <laughs> would you like to make that motion, Kyle? Uh, yes, I'll make a motion to uh, first amend. What I'm looking at says town of B in yeah. one place, so to replace B with Mel Sachs, mm -hmm. and also to add end buildings after the phrase real estate. Okay, so the motion is to replace the words town of V, as I read earlier, with town of Melsex, because that was just a mistake. Um, the right to purchase the real estate upon which Romney Elementary School is currently located. What you want to say is to purchase the real estate and buildings yes. upon which Romney Elementary School is currently located. Is there a second to that amendment? Second? You have to need, say your name. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to alter the wording, to add the word Middlesex instead of V, and to add the words uh, and buildings uh, to uh, real estate. Any discussion on that amendment? Yes. You go there, so we're amending the proposals to amend the option agreement? No, the article. article. Yes. Do we have extra copies of the article? Because the option agreement does refer to Middlesex. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. The real estate, comma, including the buildings upon which. We've got a couple of English teachers over here. What do you want? That was better than that. Just something that makes sense for the whole sentence, whatever that is. Sorry, that's vague. Any? Uh, yeah, just a second. I can go back here first. I think the point is to have Article 1 and Article 2 mirror the same thing as far as real estate and buildings. I yep. think that's the gist of it. Yep. If somebody wants to suggest wording, um, yes, and then yeah, here. Uh, does does amending the article uh, interfere with the warning and therefore get us into trouble down the road? I think if this body approves the amendment, I think that we're okay. If, unless any lawyers want to agree with or disagree with me on that, I think this is a this is a town meeting and, and we can. Peter, did you have a suggestion? I agree. So my question is, what about the playground? That's not a building. Real, Real estate equipment. and building. So it would add in buildings. Playground equipment. Ooh. Perhaps improvements. Does playground equipment count as building? Not a building. Okay. State attorneys in the room who would like to weigh in on this question of the wording that we're amending? Oh, Lister. Hi. And yeah, Lister, sure, go for it. So, the real so estate, your name? Sorry. Real Amy Whitehorn, the real estate, the real property, the buildings, and site improvements. That will be the language we use in Lister. Okay, so is that a suggestion that you'd like to make? Sure. Let me just get a pen. Yeah, thank you. All right, so. Real estate, buildings, and side improvements? Site. Of site. So a swing set is a site improvement. And site improvements. Are you sure that would include the playground equipment? I would include things like a parking lot or a driveway or a fire line, but I don't think it would include the uh, is that a question? Yeah, yeah, please respond. Thank you. So, site improvements generally, from a lister perspective, include curb cuts, driveways, water, sewer, septic, and, and 
landscaping. It, it's everything around on the property, fencing, etc. We could specify what those improvements are, but we typically don't. So you're, you feel comfortable as a listener that playground equipment on a school would, playground would in, be included under site improvements? Would be a site improvement. However, I'm, I'm not the only one of the three of us, and if, there, if there's a concern to add equipment on the property, I would support them. Jeff? Normally, if it's a permanent structure that's in the ground, that it becomes part of the real estate. If it, if it was a, a slide that wasn't mounted to concrete in the ground, then they could take that if they want. But if it's permanent structure in the ground, which I think everything out there is, then it becomes part of the, part of the property. I think, I think right, it's talking about a fixture, it becomes a fixture to the right. real estate. Um, and so maybe just that word fixtures and in any fixtures. Um, Right. Chris is suggesting that we add the word fixtures. Okay. Real estate, buildings, fixtures, and site improvement. So, this was a little bit of a consensus process, but with your permission, um, we are now discussing an amendment that adds the words uh, Town of Middlesex, um, and this is in the third line of the warning, and um, the right to purchase the real estate, buildings, fixtures, and site improvements upon which the Romney Elementary School is currently located. Okay, Susan, just for the record, uh, who made that motion? It was kind of a group process. <laughs> um, <laughs> Would somebody like to move that? Uh, I will move for that exact word. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. And I'll, I'll also just state for the notes that the understanding is that that's consistent with what was intended in the morning. Okay. Is there a second for this amendment? As Name? Sorry, who's the second? Nancy Riley. Nancy Riley. I think there was maybe a light that just went off because of a timer or something. It's just oh, we'll have to move. Somebody's right. I'm just going to do this and <laughs> come on. I would like to see better than it's, I can see right now. <laughs> Could somebody bring in a six-year-old to run back and forth, please? Keep these lights on. Or the switch. Or the switch. So we need to have more more vibrant uh, meetings to keep our lights on. <laughs> Thank you. It takes a village. Definitely takes a child. All right, great. So we are now discussing the amendment, um, and I think I just read it. Um, are there any questions or further discussion or on the amendment, or would we like to vote on the amendment? Mary. Mary had asks if, if there's a leak in the ceiling, is it now? The, the, yeah. new, the new unified district is going to own the building and they're going to maintain it. Which is not what we're voting on right now. Right. That, that's, that's, we are being forced. That's, that's being forced. What we're voting on is, is this amendment. Well, yeah, it's every responsibility um, for the new Everything, everything yeah. maintains their building. Yeah. But that's just to be clear. That's not what we're voting on. Right. We we didn't we aren't voting on that. Any other discussion on the amendment? All right. If we're all clear on the amendment, all those in favor of the uh, new of the amendment, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The amendment passes. So we have an amended Article One. Is there further discussion on Article One? if the building was to no longer be used as a school, um, but I think the language says if it's no longer to be used for educational purposes. So 
what could that mean? Is that, is that so vague? I mean, it, it's, it's no longer problem. uses the school is a very specific thing. Right. But for educational purposes, it, there could be a, you know, a retreat house here or a yoga studio or I don't know. Uh, I, you know, I think the educational purpose means um, educating students um, and consistent with the charge of the new uh, of the new entity, the new supervised uh, uh, United uh, uh, District um, Union District, uh, and you know, to I think there'd be a lot of trouble if it was just could be done. Let's say yoga studio or something along those lines. I, I don't think that that would be educational purposes uh, consistent with what the mission well, is. The state to it wouldn't be the state. It wouldn't be. The, it's just the new union. It wouldn't be the state, although, the state although. The union district signed on to an idea to establish after the dissolution of the Romney School to have a regional educational research center for public education in Vermont. Um, I don't I'm just, I'm I just, just using my and that, and that, that could be, that could fall within educational purposes. Um, I agree, I'm not disagreeing with you. Um, so that would be could potentially be an educational purpose. Yeah. Um, it has to be a non-profit Um, not necessarily, I don't think. You know, I, th I think the, uh, I think this article is if schools are closed, essentially. Um, if the school, well, if the new entity, if the new union, uh, does not need the school anymore, it's not using it for those purposes uh, for educating students and it's going to be closed, then the towns get first steps, is, is what the default article says. And we're trying to ensure that that happens without being modified. Michael. So, uh, two things occur to me. Uh, one is, it seems like this new district could say Rumney is no longer a school. But then if this educational purpose continues, we really don't have this option, right? I mean, that's kind of what you're bringing up, John, right? Well, there's a, there's a real world example, too. So there is rumblings in another community outside of a box that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, names. Um, just, yes, say your name, and if oh, you could sorry. stand up, that would be great. Can you stand up? Sure. Um, so in another community, there's talk about closing one of their elementary schools, not in our district, but using that building as some purpose of a central office. So we should think about things like that potentially happening here as a new building. So if, if someone wants to oh. Yeah. Are you saying, Marilyn, are you suggesting um, uh, another amendment? I don't know. I just want to say that. Yeah. Well, we're... It's still used for it, isn't it? For public education of students. So we're that looking at we say to, to be used uh, as a, for a school as we know. That's, that's, or something along those that's lines. That's specific. Sarah's amendment is public specific. Public education would still be, end up being a, the district coming in and, and using the resources for the public education of students in Central Maybe, maybe one. Um, public education of the regs. Thirty thousand foot view that you're talking about, John, of saying, "Well, we can use it for educational purposes," and that would then derivatively be used for educating students. So, direct teaching of students. So, um, the proposed amendment, I think that I'm hearing from um, Chris. Chris Sarah. Chris. Chris Sarah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the problem here, people. Um, is the event the property is no longer used for edu direct education of students? How about providing direct educational teaching services to students? Public education. Public. <laughs> direct public educational teaching services to students. I think you need to be careful because in the individual direct instruction, you just have an activity. So I wouldn't choose that phrase, first of all. Sarah, where are we in um, providing 
Public, public educational. Um, and Emily said that's something I couldn't hear what you said. Oh, I was saying the phrase direct instruction means a certain kind of classroom activity or educational activity to educators. So I'd be careful about using that. Right? So do you think pu providing public educational teaching services to students? Emily, would that, would that yeah, take a point? Okay. Okay. In the event that the property is no longer used for providing public educational teaching services so to students. So just to clarify, you're taking out the word direct. Yes. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Keep along. All right, so Chris McPay has suggested this amendment. Is there a second? John Folio seconds. Okay, it's been moved and seconded, uh, the second amendment here, uh, to have replaced the words for educational purposes with pro for providing public educational teaching services to students. Is there discussion on the amendment? Yes. I have a question. Question. It was hard to hear you when you started talking at the very beginning. So what we decide today goes then to the Unified District Board and still has yet to be approved. Is that correct? No. 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 Okay. No. Okay. okay. Chris, up to the microphone. So the Romney Board has a <laughs> meeting scheduled for directly after this meeting um, and will uh, vote on um, basically mirroring the votes here um, and sign off and, and basically um, sign the contract tonight. So it doesn't go to the, it would be a done deal. And if, you know, the uni Unified Board would have to challenge what we do here um, to try and undo it if, if they wanted to try and do that. Um, but what we do here, uh, the Romney Board, it's gonna take up immediately after this meeting. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Sure. Any other discussion of this amendment, Michael? Uh, Michael Levine. So, Chris, did you have in intention K through 12 students or adult students when you made that suggestion? Because right now it's open to any age. Right, 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 right here, students. right here. Sorry. <laughs> it was students who are currently educated in the building now. So it was K through six, or with K through district, more elementary district students. District would be K through yeah. 12. Right, but I, my intention was K through six. Yeah. Okay. But I'm not opposed to K through 12, but if that happened, I mean, I think the goal is that if it's no longer being used for uh, educating students directly, um, but to use, you know, taking Emily's caution in, under advisement, um, if it's not being used for educating students, then that's no longer the educational purpose that we want, and it should come back to the town. Okay, and then the second part of that is, uh, is it about uh, Middlesex residents in this building? Or if they decide Middlesex residents should go over to East Montpelier, but Worcester's gonna come to this school. Is that in your thinking at all? It, it, you know, once the building goes over to the um, new, new Union District, um, they could determine um, to have students from other school, uh, other towns come here, um, and Middlesex residents go somewhere else. So the idea is not to say, oh, if Middlesex students aren't here, then this clause comes into effect, because I think that would have to be very specific. It's a broader educational purpose, regardless of where the students from in this now united district come from. Okay. And he said, I, I had not thought they'd, oh, it's just, just Middlesex students. I was not thinking along those lines. So then can I suggest an amendment based on this that <coughs> rather than, I think it says educating students was the phrase that we say. Providing public educational teaching services to students. Right, so we say K through six or K through 12 students. Or pre, no, pre yeah, pre-K. Pre-K through 12, pre-K through six, what's your pleasure? I'll say pre-K through 12, and you leave okay. it to the body too. Okay, so we have an amendment to the amendment, which is to add the words pre-K through 12, is there a second? I'm sorry. Uh, okay, uh, sorry, okay, so John needs a second. Um, so we're discussing whether to add the words pre-K through 12 to the amendment. Any discussion on that question? 
Hi, I'm Lucas Mardella. Chris, I have a question for you. Uh, what do you think would happen if we just did the article after the reference to one dollar? Because from the town of Middlesex perspective, we don't want to give up this building and all the grounds. And we would love to buy it back for one dollar on July 2nd. <laughs> voted in and see what would happen. <laughs> you know, I, I would say, you know, I, I don't think that that would uh, you know, pass much. I just, I, I admire your spirit. <laughs> I can't entertain that as, as a motion right now, Kyle, because we're doing the amendment to the amendment. But if you want to bring it up later, you can. Um, right now, we're talking about adding uh, the words K-12 to the amendment. Yes. So another point of clarification. The amendment to the amendment is the point of doing this is that should the unified school district cease to use the building for a purpose we specify, that then the town will have the option to purchase the building, its land, structures, etc., for one dollar, along with all any other debts associated with it. Correct. Sure. Okay. But the, just to clarify, we're talking about a specific condition that we are telling the district, the new unified district, if they no longer meet that specific condition, and right now we've got the teaching of public pre-K through grade 12 students as our specific condition, but if they cease to do that, then we have the first option to purchase the property for a dollar as a town with all of its, you know, whatever else is involved. And if it's, if they cease, if they cease using this building to do that, that's then that's, that's the contingency. Yes. Great. Okay. Dave. Uh, Dave Barnard, just as a minor point of order, mostly all true except for that bit about uh, pre-K through 12, because that's what's under discussion. That's what's under discussion. That was my, <laughs> thank you, and that was the clarification that the condition that I was clarifying is what we're at, at issue right now. Right. The use that we are conditioning is public student education grades pre-K through 12. Providing public educational teaching services to pre-K through 12 students is the wording. So right now, we're deciding whether to add pre-K through 12. Are you ready for the question? We'll you don't the call the question, man. You just like to say, yeah, yes. you're ready. Yeah. Great. Okay, thank you. Then you don't have to vote on calling the question. Yes? I just, in this discussion, you know, we, we want to get this right. Based on that language, does that mean the district would have to be teaching grade through 12? Or that any of those grades would qualify? I think we, the intention is any of the grades, and not that we require them to have grade through 12 in the building. So I just want to make sure we word it so that that's the Response from the lawyers in the room? Or other people with opinions? Um, just, yeah. So I think it's high. Chris. Oh, sorry. You didn't like no. that. Do you want a suggestion, Chris, from sure. a former education lawyer? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I no longer practice. Um, I am no longer an active member of the bar. Um, so we want to clarify that it would be for the direct instruction of pupils, public instruction of pupils from grades pre K through 12. That, would that meet the condition requirement that we want to put forward? Yeah. Michael's, Michael's I'm, I'm responding yeah. through the moderator. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so I, I the clarification there is that, if I understand Michael's point, is that that educational services pre K through 12 is, is the condition. So well, right now, we're pre K through 6. So is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So by saying it that, we need maybe some qualified qualifier language in there. It says educational services that um, that that potentially 
that or something that serve that is sort of served within that range. So just for clarity's sake, I think we're beyond just educational services. It's a little bit more specific than that now, just at your behest. Um, and so I mean open to language if you're if you're thinking that um, if any, like if, it, if it's serving a 12th grader, uh, that that would prevent the contingency from being met. Um, what's, the, what's the concern, Michael? The, the concern is that, as John tried to explain, so right now we are pre-K through six in this building. Okay. Our language says that unless the district is providing pre-K through 12, we have the option to buy the building. But we're not really asking them to do pre K through twelve. It's just if they're if they're using it for any body within that range, but not the entire. Range. Right. So they can decide just fourth grade. Yeah. They could. And that, that right. So. Um, so education within the range. Within the range. That's that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Within the range, I think. Within the range. Right, okay, I know. Um, we, this would be amending the amendment to the amendment. So um, we need to, um, and we could vote this. Can I accept it as a friendly amendment to my original? It's okay with me. Um, so, um, so, and if it were, if we were gonna do that, if rather than um, educational teaching services to pre-K through 12 students, the wording would be. Could I suggest the wording? Yep. Uh, primary or secondary education. Between pre-K and Well, but that's primary through secondary specifically covers elementary school and high school. But it might be. To primary and or secondary uh, students? They're, they're <laughs> no. Okay. Within the range of is what we were talking about. To students within the range of pre-K through 12. Does that work for you, Michael? I, I hope so. I, I actually don't even know at this point what the right language would be. I know what okay. I intended. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Providing public educational teaching services to students within the range of pre-K through 12. That's the new amendment we're now discussing. Um, I think that that was a friendly amendment to um, Michael's um, initial amendment, the pre-K the, the pre through 12. Somebody, did you have John? Is that, is that John? John Lawrence. Yes? John Lawrence? Sorry, David Lawrence, sorry. It's Hamilton there. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, Mary. That's that's a, a fair point. Um, but I also don't know if you'd want to tie the hands of the new union because a lot of at U thirty two now students come from Orange and other towns and they provide a source of rep tuition revenue which really helps out the uh, the district as a whole. And so I would anticipate that there might even be more of a push in trying to have students from other towns that are outside of the five towns come to school here. So um, I, I wouldn't recommend that. Okay. Just that, but good thought. Okay. Kyle. Uh, again, asking the question to Chris, would it be putting something saying um, that a, a majority of which are Middlesex residents? No. no. Well, I, I, look, I live right across the uh, street from the school. I want my kids going here. We have to think about what powers this new board is going to have. And one of the powers is they can move our students. They can make my three kids go to another school building. And if we put language in here that says majority of these students need to come from Middlesex, then that would make them think twice before a shift of students to another town. And so Kyle makes a good point, is that the uh, new board um, 
you know, one of the charges is, is to talk about school choice. Um, and there is, you know, probably a little appetite for large transfers of, of students from one town to another, given transportation and, and things like that. But in an absolute, in, in terms of a, an authority, um, if you're talking about authority, the new board would have the authority that, that uh, Kyle was talking about. So just, do I think it would happen? No, but we're here today because we want to preserve um, certain uh, legal interests in the, in the property. Um, and so, so, uh, so it's, a, it's a fair point. Um, fair point. So, yeah, Jeff. I think if we, if we had some language that led us in that direction, and the, the inevitability occurred. We'd come together because it's an option. So we'd have that debate at that moment. I don't know that we can have that debate here necessarily. I mean, we could. Um, right? So that at that point, it says if that, if that condition's not met, then we have the option. And I, I assume that if we had the option, we'd come together and talk about that. And we'd say, no, we like the people from Worcester, and we like the people from Randolph, and we'll bring them all in. and you know, at that point in time, maybe 10, 20 years down the line, and that's a discussion, I think, an argument to be had for that community at that particular point in time. So that having language like that, I think, doesn't limit us. It just give, brings us to another discussion point. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. So um, I'm going to kind of bring us back to um, our process. Um, and. Um, we need to make some decisions, um, and we can entertain this motion if we want to, but it can't be an amendment to an amendment to an amendment. So I'll have under Robert Schultz. Peter. I call the question on the amendment to the amendment. Okay. So Peter Hood calls the question on um, the wording within the range of pre-K through 12. Is there a second on calling the question? Okay. So we need to second. Uh, you're in. I saw, I saw several. So, um, so we are now voting on whether to cease discussion on um, the wording within the range of pre-K through 12. All those in favor of ceasing discussion, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. We will now vote on adding the words within the range of pre-K through 12 to the proposed amendment. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and we have amended the amendment. We are now discussing the amendment and whether to add this amendment to Article 1. And the, and the amendment is at the end of the article. We are saying, for $1, in the event the property is no longer used for providing educational teaching, public educational, thank you, teaching services, to students within the range of pre-K through 12. Do I have that right here? Is there a discussion on this amendment, Article 1? Is this the way it worded? Is that going to be clear that there are students physically in the building being educated in the next word? Or is it just saying, what is the education for this room? I should say students in the building? Would you like me to read it again? Uh, uh, that's not a punishment. I, um. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Susan, yes. Can you read the article so we have yes, I'd be glad to read it one more. Yeah. Shall the voters of the Middlesex District approve the grant of an option agreement from the Middlesex School District to the Town of Middlesex, which gives the Town of Middlesex the right to purchase the real estate? Sarah, why don't you read it? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> The real estate. It should be. It should be. The real estate. Real estate. I Not think it's including buildings. Real estate buildings, fixtures, and site improvements. Real estate buildings, fixtures. Real estate buildings, fixtures, and site improvements. Okay. Upon which the Romney Elementary School is currently located. From the Middlesex School District or its successors in interest for the purchase price of $1 in the event the property is no longer used for providing public educational teaching services to students within the range of pre-K through 12. So I think we're saying that we're gonna, we're talking about providing public educational teaching services. 
whether it's in the building or not. That's the yeah. Doesn't it say when the building no longer used? In the event that the property is no longer used for. So does that answer your question, Chris? No? No. I don't know if it's clear. I don't know if it's clear enough that it's six if the students are in the building. In the event that the property is no the property being the real estate building fixtures and site improvements. In the event that the property is no longer used for providing public educational and teaching services. Would they be? Providing public educational teaching services to students within the range of pre K through 12. Yeah. All right. Other discussion on this amendment? On the amendment. Are we ready for the question on the amendment? Yes. Okay. All right. Great. All those in favor, let's see, the, and the amendment, again, is at the end, is adding the words providing public educational teaching services to students within the range of pre-K through 12. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and we have amended Article 1. But we can amend it more if we want to. Or not. Other discussion on Article 1 or questions? Cindy Wheatman, my question is um, we have the option to purchase, but what if they don't want to sell? They have to sell. They don't know what the purchase is. Okay. The, town, the town would have, the town, not the school district, because the school district's gone. The town has to make a decision whether they want to exercise the option. Okay. Right. If you have it. Peter. Can I be recognized? Yes, absolutely. I do have a question about uh, what they call paragraph five. So you know, on and on, on and on we go with it, but, but in paragraph five it says, for its part in a special consideration for the district for any town option to purchase the upper premise, the town covenants and agrees. That the conveyance of the subject premise to the town shall be a condition upon the town owning and using the subject premises for community, civic, and public purposes for a minimum of five years. So I'm sitting here and thinking, okay, this is a gigantic town clerk's office. It would be, could be an auditorium, could be, who knows what it could be. Cannot be probably senior housing. Cannot be. That's that's a public purpose. I mean, th well, this is pretty broad is, language. It isn't. Community, no civic, or public. I, I'm just trying to think my way through this. So, this building is an elementary school right now. It has significant value as an elementary school. To turn this into something else, whatever it is, is going to be. Tremendously expensive, number one. And number two, the other thing I don't like in this, which I understand why it's in here, but if we buy this building back for a dollar, we're going to assume any outstanding debt that pertains to this building. So, you know, debt is like additional purchase. So I'm just I'm just sitting here thinking, how feasible is it that the town would ever want to do this? And I realize that's a question for another day, but I think when we're the terms of this. I just wonder if we're boxing the town in so the town would never agree to buy it back for a dollar because of all these. My guess is that language is coming from uh, background Title 16 education law about because it's paid for with education dollars, there's, I think that does put some restrictions on what it can be used for, is my guess, but that's why it's, it's boxed in that way. I get all that, but I'm just saying, you know, we're all thinking, oh wow, this is going to be great. We're going to get this building back. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, it might not be so great. You want to change it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You now get it as is. Well, we would definitely get it as is. Correct. Right. If, 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 presuming it's still an elementary school, yeah, all I'm, I'm saying is a close elementary. <laughs> enough. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to address in my comments to the moderator, and I I would just like us to stay on task. I think that the question is, 
simply should the town have the option. If we're going to go through a legal, uh, a legal document tonight, we're going to be here until 4 o'clock in the morning. So let's just stick with the, with the question that's being warned, which is, should we have that option? Other discussion on Article 1? Yes. I, I concur with that. And I also agree with you that it's a discussion for another day. We voted on the amendment, so we are discussing Article 1 as amended. Yes. So I, oh, just. Oh, okay. Recognizing there will be different views on this, I will make a motion to add the language at the end, comma, the majority of which are Middlesex residents. In the event the property is no longer used for providing public educational teaching services to students within the range of pre-K through 12, the majority of which are Middlesex students? Yes. Residents. Residents. Is there a second? Second. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded to amend the current amended Article 1 to add the words the majority of which are Middlesex residents. Yes. Discussion? Discussion. So I would encourage us, listening to what Chris was saying earlier, which is accurate in my understanding, that this is not necessarily a good idea because tuition dollars that come into a community, into a school district, with students who come from other towns, other school districts, make a significant impact in a good direction for the residents of the district where the students are coming in, to, into which the students are coming. Um, so it would look very protectionist for us to put language like that in our, um, in our option agreement whatever, to the new unified board. And it could ultimately be more harmful than good uh, to put it in versus leaving that language out. Um, it's something to consider. There are certainly a lot of students in our community in the school right now. We probably have at least one student that comes in from another community. Um, and we don't know what tomorrow looks like. So I think it would behoove us to be very cautious about the protectionist language Understanding we all love this, it's our community school, and there are wise reasons not to do that. Other discussion on the proposed amendment, Jeff? I also, Jeff I, I don't think that um, even by putting that language in, doesn't necessarily say that the new district can't take some of the middle sex residents out. So I, I think it's something that's put in there that's more potentially harmful and doesn't necessarily guarantee that middle sex residents are gonna go to school here from, which is the end goal, but the reality is that that the, the, the cost of transporting other than high school people to another school is prohibitive and probably would, would not necessitate Middlesex residents or Middlesex students going to East Montpelier or Berlin or wherever. Other discussion on the amendment? I understand the um, intent or the desire to be really supported. I think it's great to have Middlesex students educated within Middlesex. Um, I would um, encourage voting against the amendment because I think it ties the hands too much of the future board that will be responsible for educating all of the children in the district and not just the children in Middlesex. Um, they might want to reconfigure school in some ways, and it feels very um, protectionist, it, it, uh, protectionist in a way that excludes um, education, potentially excludes educational services to a broader cross-section of the students in our, in our district. And also it may backfire. It might be instead provide an incentive to close the school if we can only educate Middlesex students here and maybe not combine them with Worcester or some other um, area, then we'll just close the school and then all the Middlesex students would be having to go somewhere else. 
So I would urge voting against it. Well, this is uh, Kyle. Um, I called that to specifically said the majority of which so that uh, we could have students from other towns come in here. Um, uh, and uh, there's a reference to time in the hands of the future board. That is why I'm proposing this. I want them to actually think long and hard about reconfiguring the schools before they do it. And I think a provision like this would give them a lot more pause and uh, I, I mean, I just can't imagine having a conversation with my six-year-old that instead of walking across the street to the school that he has gone, he has seen from our window and gone to for years, uh, we're taking them to a new place. And I want to give that new board, which we don't want to even exist, two-thirds of Middlesex oppose this merger. I want them to think long and hard before they make a decision like that affecting my kids and the other kids who go to this school. Other discussion on the proposed amendment? Anybody? Any other questions? Chris? Chris, microphone. I'm sorry. You're also going to be like the audience. See, someone else has a microphone. Like, like, oh. I'm never <laughs> um, You know, Kyle makes a good point. He said, if there's going to be provision uh, like this, it has to happen now. Um, otherwise, uh, the opportunity to put it in is lost. Uh, and it would probably give the, the new board pause. Um, I, I, you know, I just couldn't envision um, more than, you know, we have about 180 students here now, 170. Um, and, and when Kyle says a majority, that's, you know, half plus one, um, that's still a lot of students from other places that could come here. Um, and so it, it's, it's an option. Um, and I, I think Sandy's right there. It could have some negative consequences as well. And, and Kyle, even if we had that, there's no guarantee that your, your child would still come here if there was going to be a shifting around because they wouldn't be treated any different than anyone else in terms of uh, who, who, what student was sent where. Um, but it is, it is something to seriously consider because of um, just the implications of it. Um, and again, I do think it would tie the new board's hands, maybe not in a negative way. Um, so just some thoughts. Thanks. And if anyone else has a really quiet voice and wants to use a microphone, you're welcome to do that. I didn't mean to, to give this, um, Chris special mumbling privileges. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm, yeah, we like these meetings because I hear lots of good perspectives and it makes me think really hard. And uh, I don't think I'm in favor of the amendment as is, but I think I agree very much with the intent of it. I wonder if collectively we might be able to come up with a way to rephrase it. That was being here till 4 a.m., but I think the core of the concern is about students being compelled to go somewhere else. Um, if there were st schools that get mixed around, and some students want to go somewhere else, great. If there's a, a large group of students who's being compelled to go somewhere else, I think that's the large concern here. And so I, I, I don't have the exact language in my head, I'm sorry, but um, if it could be rephrased to say that we can exercise the option if students, middle sex students, are being I'm, I, I am concerned about germaneness. It's one of those things that moderators are trained in. Eventually, an article becomes not the same meaning as the article that was proposed, and we can't pass articles that weren't warned. And eventually we start to say, people say, wait, this is what happened at the meeting? I, didn't, I, I read the agenda and I didn't think that was on the agenda. And my concern is, We've, we may have reached our limit in terms of uh, germaneness. Sarah, did you have a comment? I, I was actually just going to back you up, Susan, on that, because we're getting really far afield, uh, and I'm just worried that we're going to create something that won't be really exactly what you said. You know, uh, eventually it, it doesn't actually hold up if it's challenged. Yes? Uh, a suggestion, and because where I was thinking too, both of you guys were all in the same wavelength, 
Um, perhaps an, a strong advisory letter from our school board with such language would be helpful to the new unified district board should they face a situation like that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the way to go, that certainly happens in other uh, statutory, regulatory, and legal contexts where advisory language can be useful uh, in decision making for future bodies or other bodies. So this would be a non-binding um, decision by this group since it's not warned, but what you're suggesting from the floor is that the school board, while it still exists in the next two days, compose a letter that suggests about the children of our community being shipped to other schools and our school building being used for purposes other than educated children between pre-K and 12, public education. We are from, from Middlesex and Broadway. Um, we, we've got the part, part in our amendment already, um, but we can hammer it home in, in an advisory level. So just for the purposes of time, what I'm going to suggest is that we take a straw poll. This is a sense of the room. There's nothing binding about this, um, about the suggestion that, that sorry, what's your name? Amy that Amy just made. If you think that, yes? School board meeting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a suggestion from this room. I was really hoping for a straw poll, guys. Well, I, in that context, yeah. I just want to say we haven't taken a vote, so I'm not sure that the board really could say in the letter the consensus of the town is. They can speak as the board. They can speak as the board, and they can speak as the board knowing that, that they heard from the public who were concerned about them and showed up. Yeah. Um, I, I appreciate the idea. I am going to insist we do have a vote. Yes, on absolutely. Because um, I, again, it, this is a legal process, and this actually means something that we put it in here. Um, but I don't want to keep people here a long time. I do just want to mention, because Sandy had mentioned, could this make it more likely that our school could close? As of Tuesday, we do have an amended article that protects us from that, that we actually get a vote on that if they were going to close our schools. And I also just want to remind everyone, again, this is the option. So if the merge board says, hey, We've got to make this the middle school. That's the only way it's going to work. They can make their case to us, and we can choose not to exercise this option. Say, fine, keep the building, use it as a middle school. But I want them to make their case to us before they take the kids away from the school. Okay. So what I'm going to suggest is that we put off the straw poll until we vote on the article, and then we will we'll come back to that. So right now, what we're voting on is the amendment to add the majority of which are Middlesex residents to Article 1. Are we ready for that question? All those in favor of... Sorry. Yes. Can you just read the... I'm not really sure what I'm voting on. Sure, okay. Article 1, where uh, this would be the amended version of Article 1. Shall the voters of Middlesex, the Middlesex District, approve the grant of an option agreement from the Middlesex School District to the Town of Middlesex, which gives the Town of Middlesex the right to purchase the real estate, buildings, fixtures, and site improvements upon which the Romy Elementary School is currently located from the Middlesex School District or its successors and in interest for the purchase price of $1 in the event the property is no longer used for providing public educational teaching services to students within the range of pre-K through 12, the majority of which are Middlesex residents. So right now, we're voting on whether to add the words, the majority of which are Middlesex residents. All those in favor of adding the words, the majority of which are Middlesex residents, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no? No. The no's have it, and the amendment fails. I'm now going to ask for, so what we're talking about is Article 1 as we amended it a while back, and now I'm just going to ask for a straw poll on um, whether you think it's a good idea for the school board to compose a letter um, uh, after this meeting um, reflecting concerns about Middlesex residents. Um, 
It's a discussion. But you can't, it's a, you can discuss it, but you can't vote on the great I'm doing it. And you have exactly 48 more hours to meet. So you need to report it. You can discuss, you can discuss anything. So you don't think that your board could actually act on this, even if this drop poll won? Your board can't take action that isn't won. That's what you think. You, take the straw poll. you want the straw poll anyway. The, the board chair asks for the straw poll. You, are you ready to vote yes or no on the straw poll? What's the question? <laughs> Shall the school board write a letter reflecting the sentiment of this um, of this of this meeting, reflecting the sentiment of the school board? Um, regarding um, concerns about moving Middlesex students outside of Middlesex. Is that okay? We're having, a, we're having, yeah. The, the, the idea is the question of moving too many Middlesex students outside of Middlesex. Yeah. I think it's fine, but. I think it should reflect that the vote, the vote that was taken, which, which was, it was discussed, there was concern, and it was defeated, but there was you know, a lot of discussion about it. Okay, great. All those in favor of such a letter, uh, say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, no? No. All those in, I'm gonna do this again. All those in favor, raise your hand. such as it is, passes. It's not really a motion, it's a straw poll. It's a straw poll, it is non-binding. The school board is under obligation to do nothing. There's a sense of the meeting. All right, we now have Article One, and it's amended, and unless we want to amend it more, we can vote on Article One as amended. Peter. I'm sorry about this, folks, and I'm hungry and tired too. I'd like to know, Chris, where paragraph five came from in this option. This, this entire paragraph to me is detrimental to the town's interest, and I don't know why we even have it in there. The thing is, we, we, we aren't voting on that option agreement. That, that's not like part of our ability to change tonight. So it is, it's important to know it so you can vote yes or no on, on whether we're gonna include it, but we, aren't, we can't change it tonight. It's not part of the morning. And, um, so we're stuck with this option that we're going to have this written. Chris, can you start? Yeah. Um, this, these documents um, counts, the town counts to the first step toward um, making this illegal, uh, preserving their legal rights through an option like this. And so we basically cribbed off their documents, uh, modified them from Middlesex. And so this language came from Scott Cameron, the attorney who did the work for us. Um, so Peter, too, I can't tell you where the origin of this language came from. Uh, but I think Kyle is right that um, if, if there's been educational uh, money used for buildings and the um, school is no longer used as an educational facility and the town buys it, there is this five year, um, you can't just like turn it around and sell it to someone else. I, I, yeah. I understand okay. clearly what it says. My, yeah. my question is, if we approve this article, right. we get this language and we can't amend it? Yes. It's, okay. it's, 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 it's legal. I'm sorry. It, it, it's an option. Yeah, as you know. Um, yeah, and I'm not, I, I am not 100% sure, but my understanding as moderator, that's the way I would rule, is that what we're voting on here is the article and not the, uh, the attachment that it refers to. So I don't think we can amend okay. the legal, and, uh, but I, if other, if, you know, that, you, and you are totally willing to overrule me. That's not the town of Middlesex just serves, but what are you saying? That's just a comment. Mary. Well, 
Berlin Callis. Are we all doing the same kind of? Uh... Um, Berlin and Callis um, are a uh, Dodi, uh, a Worcester, and um, East Montpelier have chosen not to. Yeah. They're not doing. And and um, from my understanding, um, East Montpelier in Berlin uh, and uh, Worcester thought they did not need it. Uh, because it's the, the, the default article is part of the default articles, um, and my concern is that the default articles can be amended. Um, and you know, from amending to the article that's there could be amended even though it's been adopted. Uh, so. so, even if we vote in this order, we should pass the amendment no. Oh. No, because it's because it's our it, 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 Right. That's right. We have a right. specific agreement. That's right. That's what we're working on. Yes. The point of the article that we're voting on is to have an option. We have to specify the option when we send the information to the new unified district board. This is the option that we have in front of us. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. So if we want to have an option to exercise, we're holding it current. And this is the model that Callis used, correct? Yes. And the language that's in here in paragraph five does look like language with, with uh, which I am somewhat familiar in ancient times when I was in practice. I cannot confirm <laughs> any of this information. Um, but I will say, for what it's worth, that there are very strict statutes and regulations around what can happen with school property that has been paid for with school education funding, and including time after the school ceases to be a school. So for what it's worth, that's my resident opinion, and this, if we are ever going to have an option it would appear to be the one we have in our hands tonight to consider that we're that we're actually voting. Otherwise, our our the article that we're voting on is moot because there's no option to go with it otherwise. Correct? That is correct. And then, but then the the option that would be available to the town would be in the default articles provided it is never amended. So there is a backup, and I, did, I just want to clarify that. And that, that would put it in further in the hands of the new unified district board to define the terms of the option we would potentially have. Uh, I think the language would probably be the same statutorily, but it is in terms of the town having first right of refusal. Yes, yes I believe that's right. So we are discussing whether to pass Article 1 as amended. Are we ready for the question? Yes, yes I think we are. All right. I'll read it one more time. Shall the voters of the Middlesex District approve the grant of an option agreement from the Middlesex School District to the Town of Middlesex, which gives the Town of Middlesex the right to purchase the real estate, buildings, fixtures, site improvements, upon which the Romney Elementary School is currently located, from the Middlesex School District or its successors and in interest, for the purchase price of one dollar in the event the property is no longer used for providing public educational teaching services to students within the range of pre-k through 12. all those in favor say aye aye opposed no the ayes have it and article one as amended has passed did you have a question in the back patrick sorry did you have a question i <laughs> just um I just assume we could exercise this option more than once, right? If over the years this issue came up more than one time, we'd be able to exercise the option each time. Anybody know? Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I suspect that um, if we don't exercise it the first time, then the Unified District has the power to sell it to someone else. And so it's basically right of first Right of first refusal is what we're um, we've just voted on. So I suspect we get one chance, and not more than one, because it's, the property can then be sold to someone else. Okay. Great. 
Thanks, folks. Article 2, shall the voters of the Middlesex School District approve the grant of an easement from the Middlesex School District to the town of Middlesex, this is going to sound a little familiar, which gives the town of Middlesex the right in perpetuity to use the real estate and buildings owned by the Middlesex School District or its successors in interest for certain public purposes as specified in the easement deed. Is there a motion on Article 2? Jeff Coons moves. Is there a second? Can you see you in here? Are anyone's shocking? Article 2 has been moved and seconded. Are there questions? Would you like to hear Chris hold forth on the Article 2? Jeff, did you have a question? Well, I was an amendment to mirror the, the, the grounds and that, et cetera. Real estate mirror buildings, fixtures, and site improvements. Um, the same language, just in this article. Okay, so there is a motion to amend Article 2 to reflect the parallel wording to Article 1, um, where it says, uh, right, in perpetuity, to, in perpetuity to use real estate, buildings, fixtures, and site improvements owned by the Millsex School District. Um, Jeff Coons, that's a, that's a, and it's seconded by Kyle and his um, is there discussion on this amendment to make the two rings? Okay, are you ready to vote on that amendment? All those in favor of amending Article 2 to add the words fixtures and site improvements, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay. Other discussion, oh, that's passed. Um, other discussion on Article 2 as amended. Do you have any comments you want to make? Or you just... So this, um, of the two articles, this is the one that is more important uh, because there is no language in the default articles about um, maintaining community access other than through what the unified board would permit. And so this, what this does is uh, maintains middle-sized like community access by right as opposed to grace. Um, and you know, it's kind of gets us the uh, town meeting here emergency shelter if we needed, access to the gymnasium and, and the uh, rooms for community activities and meetings and things along those lines that are, that are in the easement. So it creates a community right to use the property as opposed to asking permission. Now, it doesn't mean that there can't be policies that, you know, in, in, in terms of filling out forms for use, but it's a right as opposed to a grant of, you know, asking permission. Just to be clear, this, is, this second one is assuming that it isn't sold, that, that this, is, this is while it's still in use by Washington Central. You know, it's so. in perpetuity. In perpetuity. It's but it's either or, yeah, either, right. yeah. Okay. Yes. David Lawrence. So, David Lawrence, just a, a question then. Um, just so who takes responsibility for enforcing that, right? As you said, there might be like forms to fill out. I totally get that, but I'm just, who, who, who would we imagine is the authority then? Um, I expect that it would be the principal's office again, um, and, but it would be the principal's office. But there, there could be policy um, development about the use of the building, so which I'm sure each community now has a building use policy, and I, I assume the new board would just adopt those. Um, but I'm referring the policy, though, would then be under the authority of the W Trust and yes. then implemented by way of Yes. Further discussion on Article 2? Yeah. Great. Did they actually accept this, the unified board? <laughs> because you're asking for an easement which they do not have to grant. Well, actually, the, since the property is still owned by uh, the Middlesex um, School District, yes. we're granting the easement to the town. And so they don't, you know, they don't own the property, and we still have rights in the property, and can make these changes ourselves. For two days. Um, for, for, well, we have two more days. Right? <laughs> Doesn't only last two days, but we're acting within the, our property, our rights as property owners to do this. So we, as a town, own the building and property. The school district does. That's correct. correct. Therefore, they, why, without, they don't need to approve this easement. No, no, we are approving it. They, but they, you've given it to them. No, 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 no. Not yet. When, when you do, when well, you, if they take it up, 
and we pass this easement, and then the board ratifies it, the existing board, then the building gets conveyed subject to this easement. So it goes uh, with the building. To approve that easement and run the board. The run the board will tonight at a meeting. They're going to do it as soon as this meeting is over. They lose that power when. But, but, but once we Bill, once we've taken that step, yeah. um, it goes with the land. Um, so it's incorporated it goes into the deed. Yes, it goes into the land. Yes. Okay, that's fine. It's just as close to the time when we're using it as a special deed. Therefore, right. it's subject to the owner of the property. Okay. Huh. Would this easement survive uh, if the building, if the town didn't exercise an option and the building were passed to somebody who wanted to create a senior center? Um, I believe it would because it's in perpetuity, which means forever. Uh, and I think what would potentially happen is if the building was going to pass to some other entity and they wanted to buy it, they might negotiate with the town. Um, and that would come up then. So will it does survive, is my view. Other discussion of Article 2 is in mind. Looks like you might be ready for the question. Article 2, shall the voters of the Middlesex School District approve the grant of an easement from the Middlesex School District to the town of Middlesex, which gives the town of Middlesex the right in perpetuity to use the real estate and buildings, fixtures, and site improvements owned by the Middlesex School District or its successors and interest for certain public purposes as specified in the easement deed. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and Article 2 as amended is passed. Did we, did we pass the amendment? We did. We did. So um, unless there's other comments or discussion, um, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn this one last meeting of the Romney School District. Uh, right. <laughs> Middlesex Town School District. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much.